Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk about a day in the life of myself as a petroleum engineer. My daily, my weekly, my monthly, and my yearly habits. I get asked a lot of what I end up doing to stay on top of things in the oil and gas industry and what I do on a day-to-day -day basis to keep myself on top of things technically. And I want to give you a glimpse of what I end up doing. Before we get to the content, please be sure to like this video. Subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics. And please be sure to comment on the video below on the YouTube platform so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Please be sure to hit that notification bell when you do subscribe because I upload every Friday and every Sunday. Every Friday is a professional development topic and every Sunday is a technical review. Well, let's get to the content. First thing I'm going to talk about are my daily habits. The first daily habit I want to talk about is the obvious one. It's reading. I read at least 30 minutes a day. And that is whenever everything is really busy. If things are really crazy at work or in life, I make sure that I take the time to read at least 30 minutes and calm myself down or decompress after a very busy day or a busy week, busy period. Reading has helped me reduce my stress. It has obviously enlightened me and it can enlighten you too if you pick up the daily reading habit. Reading has also expanded my worldview and enabled me to read other books as well. So I strongly suggest that if you want to pick up the reading habit or if you want to gain more knowledge, obviously you need to read. It doesn't necessarily have to be big books, fat chapter books. It could even be headlines of a newspaper, headlines of the Journal of Petroleum Technology, whatever gets you going to enlighten yourself. Keep thinking of the word enlightened, which is why it's coming to me and I'm saying it so often. So the first thing I do wanna talk about is reading. Admittedly, this next habit is not what I do every single day because that would not be great to your joints, but it's something that I do on a frequent basis to where it's not weekly. It's exercising. I go to Orange Theory with my husband three to five times a week. We get up at 4.30 in the morning and we drag our butts to Orange Theory. Sometimes we also go on Saturday mornings as well, but usually they're not open at 5 a.m. So we get to sleep in for a little bit. Exercising has plenty of benefits. I'm not the channel to talk about all of those benefits, but I would like to share that exercising is one of those daily habits that I do have in the day of my life. The next habit I'd like to think about, and it's very close to meditation, but it's a little bit more intentional. It's reflecting. I reflect on things that have happened throughout the day right before I go to sleep. I reflect on different periods throughout the day depending on how busy the day is. I think about what went well, what didn't go well, what can I do better to be a better person the next day. Reflection has helped a lot to for me to keep things in perspective, questions that I need to that I would like to have answered and I make that a priority the next day. In the book that I'm currently reading, the, wow, I'm having a brain fart. In the book that I'm currently reading, Good to Great by Jim Collins, I'm gonna start doing this, but I always have to-do lists before the next day, which helps me with the whole reflection deal. But I should start doing to-don't lists or stop doing lists. When you intentionally stop doing something that's detrimental to your goals, you are more likely to succeed in your goals. So I strongly suggest that's something you may want to consider as a part of your reflection technique, if that is something you want to adopt as a daily habit. Now I'm gonna talk about my weekly habits. You may have already guessed that I do the YouTube channel, but I'm going to put this under a larger umbrella of what I tend to do for my weekly habits. It's called speaking engagements. Whether if it is uploading a YouTube video, which I have started only this year, 
I have made an effort to plan a speaking engagement at least once a week to practice my presentation skills. Now, it's not always posting a YouTube video or going to a networking event and giving a talk. Rather, it's also participating in speaking organizations, and I'm a member of the Midland Pop-Ups Toastmaster Club. I'll put more information in the description below about what is Toastmasters and how you can join in your respective area. There is a Toastmasters anywhere you go, and that's why it's called Toastmasters International. I used to compete in high school and college public speaking competitions, and the rigor, the academic rigor that was involved in communication techniques is hard to maintain when you're out of that after graduation. I do my best to practice my speaking skills, practice my communication skills, any chance I get. So that is a weekly habit that I suggest you pick up if that is something that you want to work on for the new year. The next weekly habit has been a one that I've recently picked up if you are a Facebook friend of mine, you may already know this, but I'm learning my Spanish. If you also seen some of my Outlook acceptances to invites, those of you know who you are, you may have seen aceptado instead of accepted because I changed my phone settings to Spanish. Yes, I might be a little bit hardcore in terms of how I'm learning my Spanish, but I'm picking up a language that I studied for six years when I was in elementary, middle, and high school. And it would be a waste if all of that studying just doesn't come into fruition for me to pick up a language and never be fluent at it. I want to be fluent in this language and in order for me to be fluent, I need to surround myself or immerse myself into the language, into the culture. Therefore, a weekly habit that I've picked up, which may even become a daily habit, is learning my Spanish. I'm currently reading Harry Potter in Spanish, and I've been reading one to two chapters a week, and I'm rereading each chapter twice. Therefore, I'm reading the chapter three times, which is why I'm still on chapter six of book number one. It's a rigorous effort that I'm doing, in which I am reading to understand the gist of it. That's the first time I'm reading it. Second, to list all the vocab words that I don't know. And three is putting all the details together. Usually it's supposed to be four times to understand the text of a passage and to understand the nuances, but I'm, re -read I'm reading it three times to expand my vocabulary. And if I still don't understand the gist of the passage, I read it a fourth time. I know I got into the weeds in learning my Spanish, but that is a weekly habit that I've picked up. If there is a language that you want to learn, I've heard Duolingo has been very successful. Rosetta Stone is successful. Even Muzzy is successful for those of you who have children. But I strongly suggest that you pick up a language and make it at least a weekly habit. And that's what I wanted to share with you as a day of a life of an engineer that speaks multiple languages. The last weekly habit I do is write my accomplishments. These end up being positive affirmations when I start the next week. I have a hard time when it comes to celebrating wins. So a suggestion that I've received in the past is writing down what I've accomplished and therefore that becomes my positive affirmations for the following week. Writing your accomplishments is a healthy thing to do. It doesn't necessarily mean that you are reducing your humility. Rather, it's boosting your self-esteem, boosting your self-confidence. And it's not like you have to advertise every single accomplishment that you've made. Rather, just remind yourself of all the progress that you have made and it gives you a reason to move forward. Now, I'm gonna talk about my monthly habits. I'm going to go back to more of the petroleum engineering stuff. And some of the monthly habits that I've adopted are going to networking events. I do this multiple times a month. I go to at least two networking events a month. And 
If you are looking for a job, I suggest you go to multiple networking events per week. But considering that I'm blessed to work in a really good company, I go to a couple networking events to not only practice my public speaking skills, but keep a pulse on the industry as well, as well as catch up with some colleagues that have been extremely, that have opened doors for me in, in the past. Networking is a skill that engineers are not always well known to have, but if engineers also work on their networking superpowers, then engineers are considered to be the most dangerous people on earth, I would say. So yes, networking events through the Society of Petroleum Engineers, American Association of Petroleum Geologists, and even the virtual networking events that are still happening due to COVID restrictions are still, are still viable options. But I strongly suggest that if you want to stay on top of your stuff, whether if it's technical or professional, go to at least one networking event a month. The next monthly habit I'm going to talk about is a little bit related to networking events, but this is from the planning aspect of it, professional society meetings. I'm mostly involved with Society of Petroleum Engineers and I'm involved in the board of directors for the Permian Basin section. We meet at least once a month, but sometimes there are other committee meetings that are involved in that professional society. And I tend to, I tend to attend those meetings or lead those meetings. Professional society meetings are a great way to practice your leadership skills, practice your communication skills, and low key work on your networking skills as well. I strongly suggest you join a professional society and check out my YouTube videos describing why you should be involved in a professional organization. I describe it at some level or another. I will put that video in the description box below once I remember which video it is specifically. But yes, the next monthly habit I wanted to share with you all is attending professional society meetings, when, especially if you hold a leadership position. Now I'm gonna talk about my yearly habits. This is something that I've picked up over the last couple of years because it started off as a LinkedIn message and a favor that for a school, but then it transpired to an opportunity. I was approached by some schools in India to give a reservoir engineering workshops, reservoir engineering lectures. And I thought that was fun. So I put together some material and I started teaching. I used to post that I taught certain classes for the schools. I was then approached to teach through Midland College and put together some course material in a subject that I'm really good at. So I do teach at least twice a year. One is over natural gas in which I have taught girls from Kosovo for them to become pioneers in the oil and gas industry in their respective countries. And then I teach a reservoir engineering course for anyone that needs it, anyone that's rotated into a reservoir engineering class. So that's one of my yearly habits is that I do some teaching because it helps me in retaining knowledge and also helps me with networking as well as communication skills. The next yearly habit I do to improve my networking as well as keep a pulse on the industry is going to conferences and I go to more than one. In fact, I go to several. If you average them out throughout the year, I go to at least one per quarter. And they're not just conferences, they're workshops, symposia. The Society of Petroleum Engineers has a nomenclature on different types of events. And I can put that information in the description box below as well to get a better understanding of what makes one event different from another and what makes a forum different from a conference, you name it. But I do go to those types of events each year in order to improve my networking skills, as well as keep a pulse on the industry and increase my knowledge on some of the latest technology that is happening in the industry. Last, but definitely not least, for a yearly habit is travel. I don't travel internationally as often as others do, 
or as often as my husband did, did before COVID. But I do travel domestically, whether if it's visiting my parents or visiting Ryan's parents or visiting our friends. Traveling helps you decompress, helps you open your eyes to different parts of the world. And is this is not a travel YouTube channel, but I wanted to share with you that I do have a life and traveling has been something that I've really enjoyed and realized that I have needed in my life. And that's a wrap everyone. Those are my daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly habits as a day of a life of a petroleum engineer. As usual, please be sure to like this video, subscribe so you can get more content in oil and gas and professional development topics, and please be sure to comment on the video below on the YouTube platform so I can incorporate your feedback into future videos. Please be sure to hit that notification bell when you do subscribe because I upload every Friday and every Sunday. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one.